So some of you are probably wondering where the video I just posted yesterday on the Chris Tyson situation and Mr. Beast allegations update video went. And that's because yesterday the video actually got hit with an age restriction because of the comment that Mr. Beast made about Daniel Bergoli in the podcast. I included the clip. I didn't think anything was actually going to happen, but in like an hour after the video got posted, it got hit with child endangerment or child sexualization. Yeah, I understand why the video got flagged, but it got really annoying because I had to go into the YouTube editor and I edited it out and I thought it would be fine after I would appeal the age restriction on the video and everything would be fine. But ultimately the video's momentum on YouTube and the algorithm and, and the analytics it killed any momentum that it ended up having, and so I'm re-editing it, re-uploading it. It's pretty much the exact same video, but that part of it is now cut out. So let's proceed on to the rest of the video as per normal. I'm sorry I had to include this at the beginning. This just really bothered me, and I am just super annoyed about it. I think there are probably a couple of other channels that have included the clip and nothing actually happened to their videos, or at least I don't think so. But the fact that it happened to me is really annoying, so anyways... Continue on with your normally scheduled video. So before we begin, I want to go ahead and apologize if you hear any background noise or laughing or chatter in the background because I have family over and they're going to be here for a few more days until Wednesday, I'm pretty sure. And they're pretty loud. They're going to be up for a while and they are just kind of fucking crazy. So I apologize for that. But after my last video, when I was talking about the Ava Tyson situation, I really thought that that was going to be the end of it. I didn't think that there was going to be any more revolving around that entire situation. I thought pretty much everything had come out in regards to Ava Tyson at the time, and pretty much afterwards, it just proceeded to get worse and worse over time, with all the Discord moderators back when their Discord was private, coming out and releasing chat logs and chat messages on Discord of Chris saying some really outlandish shit. Uh, of course, there was also, and I tweeted about this as well, there was a lot of people trying to defend defend Ava Tyson because of the fact that there was a lot of transphobia, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Finster came out and talked about Ava Tyson a little bit and their experience with Ava. Someone had recently just came out, I think it was like yesterday, talking about their sexual assault that had been committed against them by Ava Tyson. And then of course a whole bunch of more information about Mr. Beast and a couple of old clips that were taken out of context. And to be fair, there also is a video by Dogpack404 that actually goes super into detail about a lot of situation in regards to Jimmy or Mr. Beast's content and a lot of like the shady things that were going on behind the scenes and it's huge and there's so much that I honestly can't go over the whole thing so everything that I have found over the last couple of days as more information has came out is going to be all linked down in the description all the tweets that I have pulled up right in front of me all of the uh, the website, the GitHub, actually, that has to involve a whole bunch of screenshots and messages and chat logs that were a part of uh, Chris and his private Discord server. And, of course, uh, Dogpack 404's video on Mr. Beast, because I think just before, like, it recently started, like, getting around and into people's recommended feed, and, and it now has over 2.1 million views. I think for a while it was actually blacklisted, and people weren't able to see the video for a while. And the reason why I'm saying that is because Pegasus recently made a video talking about it on his second channel, and... And he tried to look up the exact title of the video and it didn't actually pull up when he was actually trying to search for it. So regardless, we're here to talk about a lot of things that have been going on since like my last video from four days ago. And it's just, it's insane how far things have actually gone since I had actually talked about it. So obviously I don't really need to discuss and talk about what has actually been happening around Ava Dyson because more likely than not, a lot of you just know more than I do because I just haven't really been keeping up with it because I've been so busy in my own personal life and just try not to focus on this entire situation because I already made it abundantly clear in my last video that it makes me very uncomfortable even to having to talk about this, but I feel it's important and I feel I should give my own thoughts and opinions about this. The first thing I want to get out of the way really quickly is acknowledging the fact that since these allegations and since all this information from the Discord moderators on Ava's old private Discord server have been releasing all these chat logs and messages that involved a whole bunch of underage people, minors, moderating this Discord server where Ava was saying a lot of degenerate, inappropriate things, knowing that there were underage people within the Discord server. There have been a lot of transphobic comments being made towards Ava, like 
not referring to them as their proper pronouns or even referring to them as their actual name, so dead naming them. In my opinion, and this is simply my own opinion, this is how I personally feel in regards to this, I just don't really see why this is such a big deal. There have been a lot of tweets being made saying, oh, this is transphobic, oh, this is this and that, and you shouldn't be dead naming them, you shouldn't be uh, misgendering them, and this and that and yada yada. And throughout the video, you're going to be hearing me referring to Ava as or hopefully so, I'm going to be referring to them as she, her. I'm going to try to be as respectful as possible, even towards someone that I don't have any respect for. I just don't think that this whole, like, misgenderizing them and not referring to them by their actual names of dead naming them just matters because in the context of the situation where we have all of these Discord moderators who are releasing all of these messages and someone coming out with their story where they're talking about how they got sexually assaulted by Ava after they had transitioned, I just don't think that this whole drama and this whole situation of her being misgendered and all this bullshit fucking matters. And I think a lot of people are trying to like diverge their anger towards the wrong people like Moist Critical because back when Moist Critical tried to talk about the situation all people were bringing up was the fact that he never referred to her as she her pronouns and only referred to her as Ava but that's her name so I don't understand why that's such a huge fucking deal. And then of course uh, Ludwig has Moogle Mail and he, people wanted him to talk about it on Moogle Mail to the point where they were constantly harassing him and they were like oh you're suddenly being very quiet about the situation and then he was basically forced to whilst he was on vacation with his family go ahead and make a video talking about the situation which was just not the way to go about it and i really and i understand where people's heart is i i i know that their heart is in the right place but in regards to the situation about ava where they're being exposed for inappropriate conversations with minors inappropriate behavior towards actual fucking people that is actually illegal it's just I think people need to be focusing on the actual important context of what's going on with the situation instead of focusing on something that at the end of the day just doesn't fucking matter because I don't think anybody is going to want Ava to be on the internet anymore and to have a platform anymore. So referring to them by their actual pronouns and their actual name or what they go by as now I just don't think that really matters in the long run, but that's simply my own opinion. But like I mentioned earlier, there were like Discord uh, moderators who tweeted out some videos and screenshots. There's a GitHub that has everything. All of it, again, is going to be linked down in the description. It's fucking bad. Like it just, it gets so bad. There's Ava under the Discord name Chris the Mean Guy where they acknowledge that there's a 14 year old in the Discord server. The fact that they put their nudes in the NSFW channel, referencing Shadbase and linking Shadbase's website in the Discord server that actively has minors in the Discord server. It's fucking terrible. Like I said, there's so much that I can't get all to it in this one video. But if you want to read through all of it, if you have the feet, if you have the free time, Go and read everything because it's incredibly important. Next, we're going to talk about the sexual assault allegations that were made towards Ava Chris Tyson. And this was made by a Twitter user named uh, Mooskina. And they pretty much just account everything that had happened between the two of them back in, I think, 2022, November of 2022, when she had actually had under 500 followers. And after they transitioned, uh, Ava, after they had transitioned as well, but before they were on HRT, they had come out to them and they got really close to, to each other. And then at one point she moved in with Ava for like a very brief period of time. They had moved in together uh, or she had moved in with, with Ava. And that was when they started having sexual relations with each other, where she would perform uh, oral, uh, sexual oral on towards Ava. And that would continue on further. They would have messages towards each other. They would eventually move it on to Snapchat, videos, photos, messages, everything. And it just proceeds to get worse. The thread is going to be linked in the description. I'm not going to be able to read all of it because I don't want the video to be too long. It gets genuinely very disgusting because at one point there's also a tweet within this thread where Jimmy actually calls Ava after Ava had publicly posted that they were on HRT. And as they were in the middle of a phone call between each other, uh, Mooskina was actually giving oral sex to Ava as they were in the middle of a phone call between the two of them. And there's a whole lot of private information that was shared between the two of them. At one point, uh, Ava then decides, as they were just sitting on the couch in the living room, right? Like, nothing was prompted, nothing sexual was happening. Ava just proceeds to remove their clothing, and then forces Muskina to perform oral sex on them. And it just, it's bad, right? The whole thread is 
awful and terrible to read. And then at one point, there's actually a reference towards uh, Ava when they took a trip over to Japan and things didn't go their way. And then they decided to go back towards Muskina because things didn't go their way and they were hoping for things to go out better and yada, yada, yada. But the reason why I'm mentioning it is because it has something to do very important with another content creator called Finster. Now, I don't really know actually what Finster identifies as. So I'm just going to refer to Finster as either Finn or they, you know, using they, them pronouns. Uh, but basically Finn had made a video a few days ago on the 25th where they had posted their uh, interactions and relationship with Ava Chris Tyson at the time. And basically what had happened with the, between the two of them is at one point, uh, Ava had offered Finn to go and travel to Japan with someone or travel to, to travel to Japan with Ava. And Finn offers or asks rather if they can invite someone to go over to Japan with them. Ava agrees that that's allowed. They go over to Japan, they hang out for a while, and then Ava just disappears and then she goes off and she does her own thing. But it was later revealed that Ava may have potentially had ulterior motives because it was actually revealed to Finn later on in a tweet somewhere. Finn actually shows it in the video that they had made that they had actually had a crush on Finster, right? They had a crush on Finn and potentially Ava was trying to do something more uh, sexual, something more than just hanging out between the two of them when they were over in Japan. And the fact that Muskina has a story where they explain a situation that involved that happened in Japan where things didn't go their way, and then Finster tweets uh, or shows a screenshot of a tweet of a, of a tweet that happened in relation or the sequences that happened between Finn and Ava, it's all just completely co coincidental. So that alone just kind of leads me to believe that what Muskina is talking about and what and Muskina's story, it's not fake. Right, it's real, it's it's not lies. I 100% believe them, and I think that you all should believe them because I know that there are a lot of reasons as to why this all may seem convenient. I know that there are a lot of reasons as to why you might not want to believe them. It's very convenient that they came out with this story as Ava Tyson has all of these allegations made against them. But at the same time, I think with all the information that they have decided to share, all the screenshots that they have provided, and just the information that she has described that coincides and corroborates a lot of information that has already been said by other people, such as Finster, I think it just makes sense to fully believe that the story that is being told by Muskina is 100% factual. And obviously, she might have her reasons other than just expressing her story, but I don't think that's the case. I think that she just wanted to get this part of her life out of the way, put this fucking scumbag into the ground because this was a terrible thing to have happened to someone and it needs to be known. It's all bad. It was like, I, I was I was incredibly uncomfortable reading all this because not only is it just very private per personal information, but it just, uh, it, it, it just, it was, it was terrible. I hated reading it. It made me super, it made me super uncomfortable. Talking about this makes me super uncomfortable, but it needs to be said. Uh, yeah, Ava Tyson, I don't understand how this person had the position that they were in. Obviously, it had to do with the fact that they were friends with Mr. Beast, and Mr. Beast is currently the most popular YouTube channel right now. But holy shit, man, just the fact that Ava was able to get away with all this degeneracy and Ill illegal behavior and then the sexual assault stuff, it's awful and it is terrible. I don't know what else to say. It's like I had already come to a consensus of what Ava Tyson was and who they were and like what their behavior was. And their behavior was the fact that they are just an incredibly degenerate piece of shit that has no bounds as to what their degeneracy is willing to go. I think there was also a tweet somewhere, I'm gonna have to find it, but I think there was a tweet somewhere, I think maybe by Keemstar, where they show a screenshot of a, of a tweet made by Ava's sister, who doesn't even refer to their own sibling as she, her. She actually refers to Ava as he, him pronoun, so... And the reason for that was because there's also a few other screenshots that have to do with the fact that uh, Ava doesn't care about being transgender, they're basically gender fluid, and basically everything they have to do with being female is just the ways of being able to express more of their degeneracy, and at one point I think Ava stole some of the, uh, some of their sister's underwear and, like, wore it to, like, express femininity or something like that, well, before they had transitioned, it was, like, years ago or something like that, I don't know. There's a lot of information, there's a lot to go over, there's so much to go over in terms of like the Discord screenshots and I can't read it all for you on this video because it's just so much. 
like I said, read it for yourselves because it's incredibly important to like acknowledge that this information does exist. Uh, even Lava has gone back and has expressed that these screenshots are real and that they went through a lot of efforts to go and get these screenshots and that this behavior expressed by Ava Tyson at the time was very inappropriate. They still don't see themselves as a victim and they don't see themselves as someone who witnessed and experienced grooming by Ava. But they acknowledge the screenshots, they acknowledge that this behavior happened, and it's messed up, right? All this that happened, it's it's disgusting. Ava Tyson is a disgusting human being that doesn't deserve a platform, doesn't deserve to be on the internet, and honestly just needs to disappear off of the face of the planet. And I hope for the love of everything that they go away forever because I don't want them anywhere near society. The last thing I want to talk about is in regards to some of the stuff that has to revolve around Jimmy or Mr. Beast. And the first couple of things have to involve some tweets that have to involve with some videos of old clips from Mr. Beast's YouTube channel where he said some pretty messed up things about black people and how $69 is too steep of a price to purchase them and some other stuff that's pretty offensive. Selling inward for $400 money? Uh, the most I would pay is like 300 Sorry, 400 is just out of my price range for that type of stuff. QQ, shut the fuck up, you stupid faggot. If the video was looped, how would I call you a stupid faggot? Exactly. It's not looped, fucking dumbass. N-word, 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 N-word. Thanks, Hasan, for the donation. I appreciate it. No more, no, no, boys. No more typing the N-word in chat. No more cursing. Selling 10 for $69 each. That's a steep price. I don't think you're going to get any sales. <laughs> I'm kidding. And then another clip where he's talking about Daniel Bergoli and he says something very inappropriate that I'm not going to repeat. But something that needs to be uh, apparent and needs to be known is that I think some of these are just kind of taken out of context. Number one, I think the podcast clip is taken out of context because it is. Leon Lush, who was a part of that podcast, actually came out with a video explaining uh, what the context actually was. And it was just... It was just a means of them to be able to say some messed up jokes, and that was the whole point. The whole point of these two clips that were shared on Twitter was that they were just trying to say really messed up things just because, right? Because back in the day, edgy jokes where you would say the most outlandish things were the things that you would say to get really popular. It's not... Right? Obviously the thing that he said about Daniel Bergoli when she was only 14 years old is really bad. And some of the clips that was from like the live streams that he did, obviously they're bad jokes as well. But I think at the end of the day, I don't really think that Mr. Beast stands by the things that he said before. He definitely doesn't stand by the comment that he made about Daniel Bergoli because that's terrible. And number one, he even says that he wouldn't actually do something like that. So. That's something at least. But the thing that I would say that is actually worse for Mr. Beast is the fact that Dogpack404, who apparently from the title of his video, he used to previously work for Mr. Beast, made a, a whole almost hour long video where he goes into depth about a lot of things about Mr. Beast's previous content, where he talks about how some of the content is actually completely fabricated because some of the stuff that would happen within the videos is actually just CGI. Like a giant pit would be completely fake. A person would be fake. Buildings in the background would be completely fake. And even some of the people that are actually a part of the videos, they're just hired actors essentially. They're people that are already working for Jimmy to begin with. They're not random subscribers like Jimmy would say at the beginning of the video. They're people that Jimmy either knows directly because they work for him or they're people that know people that work for Mr. Beast's company. Some would say, what's the big deal? Like, who cares, right? The whole point of the videos and the content is that they're just supposed to be entertaining. They're meant to bring entertainment to those who are actively watching the videos. And the reason why it's a problem is because Mr. Beast always constantly tries to portray his content as being 100% legitimate and there's nothing fake about it. Everything that's happening within the videos is completely real. Nothing is fake. The people that are within the videos are legitimately just random people that he has no idea who they are. They don't work for him, this, that, and the other. And that's just not true. I think one of the people uh, that Dogpack talks about is, I think his name is Mac. He was just a random contestant at one point, but Realistically, even before he first uh, appeared in the first video that he ever featured in on Mr. Beast's channel, he was already working for him. And he already lived in a very lavish lifestyle. He already lived in a huge, lavish mansion uh, before he even showed up in any of Mr. Beast's content. So there were times where he would say something like, man, this is completely life-changing. And like, as he got like a million dollars or something like that. And realistically, 
it didn't really make that much of a significant difference at all because he was already being paid more than enough by Mr. Beast. So there wasn't any significant difference to this dude's life. He just he just was being featured in the videos to try to, I guess, create a storyline or just. I mean, obviously, it's meant to you know it's meant to create a storyline and entertain create and, and entertain the people who are watching. But it just comes off as disingenuous. Like if that's how far you're willing to go to fake something for your videos what else are you also thinking for your videos and the rest of dog packs like 53 long minute video is in regards to fake giveaways that mr beast has been doing for a very very long time and the fact that they're basically illegal and from that very definition and how he goes about it and how he explains it yeah it is pretty damn illegal so i think a lot of us remember old content on youtube where they would say oh all you have to do is like the video and subscribe and and comment and then i'll choose you to uh win like a playstation 5 or something like that and there are plenty of clips where mr b says like all you have to do is subscribe and i'll give you like an iphone or something for an, as an example and there's a lot of videos where mr b says that there's a live stream where he's constantly re re referencing the fact that if you buy something from him so you're basically entering in a raffle by paying him money by buying a t-shirt and the chances to get something along with your t-shirt that's illegal you're not so supposed to do that you're not supposed to give someone money for the random chance that you might actually win a prize because the chances of you actually winning something are statistically just super 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 low and dog pack does the math and not only does, did he make over a million dollars profit by selling uh the t-shirts and the hoodies which cost 25 dollars each but the odds of winning a prize with a purchase was 0.06 percent chance so one in 1600 one in 1600 so the chances of someone actually winning a prize just was so statistically low that there, like there was no reason to buy into it there was no reason to buy a shirt and he was also very disingenuous as well because mr beast the entire time is saying uh, we're losing money you know we're not making a profit by selling these t-shirts and yada yada when in reality mr beast was actually making more than enough profit for the stuff that he was apparently giving away quote unquote to the people who were buying his t-shirts and hoodies so there's a lot of really scummy and shady things going on behind the scenes with not only mr beast's content and the fact that he's just lying about it there are also a lot of giveaways that he has done and and continues to keep doing that are just s super like unclear as to whether or not someone actually wins and how someone even wins to begin with how do they choose uh which person actually wins the giveaways that he that he does and then dog pack actually shows a clip where another content creator who had like seven hundred thousand subscribers i think it was they won one of the prizes that was from one of the feastables giveaways and then they featured in one of mr beast's videos i think it had to do with like the chocolate factory and conveniently that same creator who won one of the feastables giveaways also wins in that chocolate factory video so it's just all very convenient on who exactly won a prize this one time and then that same person also won another prize in another video and then later on, he also talks about the Feastables and the fact that they're not actually a healthier alternative. And Mr. Beast actually puts more sugar in his Feastables chocolate bars than something like a Hershey's chocolate bar, which is almost damn near close to that of a Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola has like 30, 39 grams of sugar and Mr. Beast has like 30 grams of sugar. So it's only like a nine gram difference. So he's basically just promoting these kids, but to go buy his chocolate bars and the chances that they're going to potentially win money because he sometimes says like, oh, if you go and like fix the store shelves with my chocolate bars on it, you'll win like $5,000. And he'll say that, which incentivizes kids to go to Walmart for an example, go and fix the chocolate bars whilst also buying some of the chocolate that Mr. Beast is selling and the chances that, that person's gonna win $5,000 all the while, it's basically just like giving them diabetes, right? Because of how many grams of sugar there actually is within Mr. Beast's chocolate bars. And there's a lot that Dog Pack goes into this video. I would strongly recommend that you go and ch check it out for yourself because it's super informative, su super well made. I would highly suggest that you go into the link in the description and you go and watch this video because it goes super into depth and it can do more justice than I can ever do. To wrap up this insanely long video, and I apologize for the video being as long as it was, I just had to go over everything that happened over the last couple of days. Like I said earlier for Ava, 
I think that they are a sick, disgusting, degenerate piece of shit that I'm honestly dumbfounded how they were able to get away with a lot of their behavior and a lot of their actions for so long. I guess it really had to do with the influence that Mr. Beast had. Regardless, this shouldn't have happened and, and Ava shouldn't have gotten away with as much as they did. It's truly disgusting. And Mr. Beast, I think there's a lot of things that he needs to do moving forward with his content. I think he needs to be a lot more blatant and transparent about whether or not something is scripted and whether or not it's not. Because there's not a problem with his videos being scripted. He just needs to be more honest about it. And in terms of some of his like giveaway stuff, I think now that I have looked back on it like a lot, a lot, and like looking at all the information, looking at all the research that Dog Pack had did, I think what Mr. Beast did before in the past and what he's potentially still doing nowadays, because there are some videos as early as five months ago that have him just giving a random person, quote unquote, because it's probably most likely not a random person. It's probably someone that he either knows or he paid as an actor or someone that is a part of one of his employees' family. This whole thing of giving the fake idea that kids are going to win a prize and having them buy into a raffle when that's against the law, it's super shady, super scummy. I think Mr. Beast needs to speak about this and be more transparent with his content. And especially if he's going to continue to keep doing giveaways, he needs to be more transparent with his giveaways moving forward because it's just like seeing everything that had been laid out in front of me and Dog Pack's video, it really opened my eyes to all the scummy shit that Jimmy had been doing, especially in regards to some of his businesses like Feastables and like the Mr. Beast Burger and stuff like that. It just... He needs to do something about it and moving forward if he wants to continue his brand. Although I think it's going to be pretty sullied considering the fact of what has happened over the past couple of days. But to wrap things up officially, I want to end off with some positivity and do something good for someone else that I know uh, amongst my friend group. And this is going to be talking about my friend Pedro, Pedro360. He is almost at a thousand subscribers and he's been working insanely hard for the past few months to try to put out the best videos that he possibly can. And I think the videos are truly amazing. I think they're hilarious. Just him playing fighting games with the lads. I think they're absolutely hilarious. I think they're really well edited and I think a lot of more people should go and support him. And the last thing I want to do for this video after all the bullshit that's been happening over the past like month and two weeks, month and a half since like the heel Mike and Zerka thing that happened, I'm Alex, Dr. Disrespect, PewDiePie being called a racist again, and Cody Ko and all this other fucking bullshit. I think the thing that I want to do is spread some positivity and he's going to be the top link in the description. I would really appreciate it if you go subscribe to my friend Pedro360's YouTube channel. Almost at a thousand subscribers and that would mean a lot to me. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all I really have to say about the situation. A lot of people fucked up, and I think that some consequences need to be, need to, need, they need to happen. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. If you liked the video, be sure to leave a like. And if you want to see more, please be sure to subscribe. Turn on bell notifications so you don't miss another video. I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm out. Peace. Let's go.